Okay, I thought today I could film a little vlog. I uh, actually had the idea yesterday because, well, I'm actually feeling very, very good today and in general recently, but I will tell you about that later. But yeah, yesterday I thought, okay, I'm making some oils. I will just film it. I feel it. And tomorrow I will do even more stuff and film a vlog. Why not? I love it. You love vlogs. I know that you're constantly asking for them. So let's do this. Um, but first of all, before we start out anything else, I would like to give a little just daily offering of water to my ancestors and to the gods. And uh, then I guess what I would like to do is I would like to tackle, well, all of these, which you have seen if you've watched my oh god my most recent book haul those are well 29 plus <laughs> books and i have to get them into my bookshelves somehow so i thought we could go through my bookshelf together and kind of get rid of some books because i know i have some books in there that i just got because they were cheap basically like if i say cheap i mean like one euro a book cheap uh so let us go through those books. Maybe let us even mark the books that I have not read yet because I sometimes forget uh, because I am chaotic. So let us declutter my books and get these books in there somehow and maybe reorganize or something. I have cat hair on my mouth as always. Let us give offerings quick, quickly and then let us go work on my bookshelf, which will be quite some work. But I thought while I'm working on my bookshelf, I would tell you a little bit of what has been going on the past couple of months. I haven't really done like an update -y kind of video. I don't really like doing those separately and I haven't been going live for quite some time. I think the last one was in November if I'm correct. So yeah, let me update you on some things and work on this bookshelf. Let's do it. Okay, I successfully removed everything from this corner so that I can actually reach all of my books. But I guess I will just start by going through all the books, seeing which ones I don't want anymore and then marking the ones I have not read yet. So let's just start up here. Um, okay, I have these huge books, for example, this huge one about old healing, folk healing and stuff. I want, I really want to keep that, but I have not read it. I think it's also not one that you read. I think it's more of an encyclopedia type of situation. I don't know if you can even see anything that I'm doing around here. Let me quickly check. Wait, I think you can see better from here, far better. I just hope that no cats will jump into frame, but well, uh, all right. So yeah, this one I will definitely keep, but it's not one that you just read and you're done with it. It's more of an encyclopedia. So no sticker for you. Then I have like this old ass herbal book. Oh, it has, oh my God. It has these beautiful vintage plant illustrations. I love those. Ah, it's so old. I should, 
I should probably keep this even <laughs> even if I'm only keeping this for the photos but it's so pretty also as you have heard in my in my book haul video I'm not really a person who like gives away herbal books because you never know if there's something in there that you won't find in another book oh by the way if everything is getting a little bit white then that's the incense I'm sorry but we will have to deal with that now my flat is very small so not a lot of space to put the camera uh, all right then we have a tiny little one what's that oh yes it's also a folk healing book that I actually got from uh, one of my coven mates so definitely keeping that um, oh yeah, The Magic of like City Plants. It's a German book, but it's especially about plants that grow very commonly in German big cities. So I will definitely keep that one. This is very important. All right, Icelandic plant magic. I have this one twice. So I kind of feel like I could give away one copy. Like this is the old, this is the old original copy that um, Albert self-published back then. But I also have the, the like the official crossed crow one. I don't know. I think I will give this one away because it's just I don't have a lot of space, so I have to I have to give some away. All right, Grimoire for the Green Witch by Anne Mura. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like it's extremely Wicca-y. It's also pretty old. I have not read it yet. I think I'm giving this one away. Um, oh, I'm doing something that I never wanted to do, to actually give away books, because I was always like, I want a huge library, but then also, if it's a book that I actually will never read, why keep it? Uh, okay, Green Witch Herbal, I have not read it yet, and uh, it's also, I think, just a lot of plants. Info. Oh, there's actually also healing remedies. Beauty stuff. I will keep this one because, again, there could be some stuff in it that I have not known from other books. All right, this random book about places of power that kind of feels very woo woo. It's a German book, who would have thought? Um, gone. Uh, Mansions of the Moon for the Green Witch. Again, a very wicca-y. Bye. Uh, okay, Crystal Muse. Bye. I don't do anything with crystals anymore. Um, a little bit sad because I think I got this one from a coven mate. I think it's a Christmas? No. Birthday present or something? But, I mean, maybe I can... I will definitely try to give these away to my friends. So, maybe this one will find a good place. Oh yeah, this one is an important one and this one gets a sticker because I really need to work through this. Um, this is a book about folk healing with the Germanic tribes and this is not organized. You, you don't have like an index or something. It's just text, 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 text. And it's just it just jumps from plant to plant, but you don't know where in the text. So I will have to work through this. All right, Plants of the Devil. I have read it and I will definitely keep this one. <laughs> Lexicon der Heilstein is actually not even mine. It's my mom's, so I guess I can give this back to her. Crystal Gem and Metal Magic. This one can go. I guess I will stop talking about the books now and give you a little bit of an update because that is, that is what I wanted to do, right? So I will just go through this and not tell you too much about it. Okay, so first of all, I went to Egypt in December, like on the 26th we went and we came back on January 6th and uh, that was insane, like it was so cool. We switched places every two to three days, that was amazing. Have I read this one? I don't think so. Um, so that was amazing and it had a very interesting effect on me because I realized by just not working for actually two weeks, two and a half weeks or something, 
Previously, of course, I had to do a lot of work to basically get shit done so that I don't miss any uploads, but I wasn't working for two and a half weeks and that has been the first time since I launched my channel, which is now three years ago? I think three years, two years, I don't remember. Um, but it was the first time since I started the channel that I haven't done any work on shop or channel for two and a half weeks and that's insane and I kind of needed it but it it made me realize that I, ne I really need to get off of this hustle mode. I was so relaxed, I slept better, my digestion was better, overall my energy was up, I think I had one migraine in these like two and a half weeks so it was just insanely great. So yeah mm. now i have i realized that i really have to i really have to step back so just so you know where i was before uh, i am working my day job four days a week and then i was always doing eight hours of work for youtube every week and then eight hours of work for the shop every week so i had effectively one day off a week and of course that day then ended up being full with either social interactions, because when are you doing it if you're not doing it on this one free day, uh, or it was just getting things done, running errands, things like that. So I didn't really have any effective relaxing and unwinding time and I was constantly stressed, I was constantly on edge, just also being like aggressive for no reason, crying for no reason because I got so enraged by by stuff that's just stupid just because i was under constant stress and all of the stress suddenly like fell off to a i, I feel like kind of healthy level so i was in a very good mood my creativity came back everything came back um so that was amazing uh but yeah that meant that now that i came back from egypt i had to kind of re-evaluate what's actually important for me and if I want to go back to the hustle mode that I was in and I decided that I don't want to go back to the hustle mode so having regular uploads on YouTube that is what is important to me so I will definitely stay on track with working for YouTube one day a week but um, but, well, the only thing I can reduce work on, basically, is my shop. Because I'm not reliant on the money that I make from the shop. I actually don't even make a lot of money from the shop because I majorly underpay myself and my prices are way too low. So maybe I will also have to revisit the pricing. But, yeah, basically, I have to make changes for my shop. So... Uh, that's why I did not reopen my shop directly after coming back as I had planned. I had planned to go right back to hustle mode and <laughs> I didn't do that. So it has been three weeks now, I think, since I came back and well, I have not gone back to reopening my shop yet because I didn't know how. Um, so yeah, basically the past three weeks I have tried to kind of figure out what I will do with my shop. Well, I was actually considering closing it all together because I am enjoying actually having a proper weekend, just two days off. I am enjoying that so much. It's insane. I'm like in, in the video where I told you about my the change in my path from 2020 three to 2024 that I did on New Year's. I told you that 2023 my, my craft has gone on the back burner because I was working so much. Yeah, so I'm finally doing more again because I have the time and I have the energy and I have the motivation back. It's so great. So I really want to just keep that. That's very important to me. Um, So yeah, that is what I'm working on right now. 
I still have not reopened my shop and I think I will do it on the next new moon. So that would be, I don't know which day, I will pop it on the screen. But I think I will reopen the shop on the new moon. I talked with my ancestors actually about it and did like a little channeling session. And I think I got a good idea or a good recommendation by them uh, to basically only do shop work every two weeks. Usually I, I shipped orders on Tuesdays and on the weekend, one of the weekend days, to basically ensure that the time between ordering and the order being shipped would not be more than like four days, three or four days. But I won't be able to do that anymore. That's just far too stressful. So I will try to maybe just do shipping one day a week and then working on more products and new products only once every two weeks. So that would mean at least every two weeks I would get a proper weekend. So that would be very, very nice. Have I read this book? I don't know. No, I don't. Um, yeah, so that is what I will probably do and I will just try that. And if that also doesn't work and I feel like I'm getting into this hustle mode and the burnout mode again, then I will have to readjust again. I mean, just because I'm saying that now that I will do it that way, doesn't mean I have to necessarily do it until I die. There's always the possibility to review your, uh, your decisions. So that is what I will do. Uh, I will just try it. But that was a major thing. Like just getting back to like normal, a normal life, not being so stressed all the time. But I am really missing uh, shop work. It is, huh, well, uh, it is my, my creative outlet a lot of the times. Making oils, making incense blends, I think that's my favorite thing to do. Oh, but I have decided on another thing. Uh, as you may know, I don't really, I don't really work with crystals anymore. So I also kind of lost the drive to basically uh, sell crystals. So I will definitely stop selling crystals, which is crazy. Um, I will definitely make less money, but doesn't matter. As I said, I don't really make money from my shop either way. And that's not what my shop is about, like at the moment. If I end up trying to live off it, okay, then that's a different story, but I don't want to sell stuff I don't really align with just to make more money because I know that crystals are, I know that crystals are very, uh, very popular, but it doesn't help if I'm not excited about it. But yeah, that on the update, I guess, Oh, and I don't know if I talked about that already in another video, but I will, as soon as I have finished my new and full moon series, I will stop posting twice every week because that's also a hell of a ton of work. So I will not do that anymore. I feel like once the series is done, that's a good point to stop. But yeah, I guess that is my update. And <laughs> I will go through the rest of this and I will update you afterwards and like put all the books in, the new books, and then I will give you a little tour of my bookshelves. I did it and I got rid of like half of my books. It's crazy, but let me quickly go through. I have right here on the left, just random general witchcraft books and just stuff about random topics that didn't really fit anywhere. That's like basically the entire left bookshelf is books like that. Like this. Oh, here is a little bit of a topic. This is all spirit work or things that I would expect to be like spirit work. So also like necromancy, ancestor work, things like that. But then down here we have a little bit more historical books. Not necessarily like witchcraft books, like for example, grimoires is like the history of grimoires, um, the history of the words shaman and shamanic. Uh, yeah, 
a little bit of history on the witch hunts and things like that. But just like historical stuff that didn't really fit in anywhere else. And then here we have a selection of random books again. The right bookshelf is the one that I have easier access to, so I put everything here that is a little bit more, well, not important, but books that I reach for more often. So up here we have basically only primary sources. So this is all mythology, folklore, stories, stuff like that. It is all primary sources. A little bit insane. Um, then down here is, well, two books that didn't fit up here and the huge encyclopedia of German superstitions. Huge. Then we have like the tiny little selection of Norse paganism books. Cute. Then down here we have more like Scandinavian sorcery, runes, things like that. To the left we have more like secondary sources, so like archaeological books about the Viking Age and the Germanic peoples and things like that. And the random um, old Norse books because I didn't know where they would fit. And then down here we have all plants and this random crystal book that my that's actually my mom's book. It's all plant books. I wanted to have the plant section over in the same sh shelf as the folklore section because they are very related. And down here we have a little section of folk magic books. And that's it. And there's so much space now. I mean, I have an entire empty shelf. I did not have an empty shelf before. This is insane. I got rid of so many books, let me show you. All right, here we go. These are the stacks of shame. I got rid of so many books. For example, all of my like core shamanism books, a lot of books that I basically got secondhand, just very cheap and that's why I got them. Not even because I was extremely interested in the topic, but because I just got them cheap. <laughs> also, like basically all of my Wicca books are gone apart from a little bit of like Scott Cunningham's books because they have sentimental value. A lot of astrology books. Yeah, there's a lot. I hope someone will take them off me because ugh, I don't want to throw them away. Like some, some are worth throwing them away. Some deserve it. But most of them don't. Most of them are just about topics that I'm not interested in any anymore. So yeah, this is a little bit insane, but my, <laughs> my book shelves look so empty. So much space for new books. Oh no, what a shame. Okay, I thought I would continue working on my new black book a little bit again. I hope you can see it properly, but I got this off of the Nordic Wolfies shop on Instagram. I really, really like it. It's like thick. If you look at this, it's very thick, handmade paper, very, very beautiful. And uh, I have only filled in a couple of pages by now. And yes, I know, I'm starting new black books or grimoires or whatever you want to call them all the friggin' time. The only thing I really stick to with filling it out is my just my practice journal, basically, where I always write down my experiences with spirits and stuff and readings and everything. But I just want finally a book where I can put down my spells, the ones I know that work well, my recipes for oils and incense blends and stuff like that. And uh, this will hopefully be it. In the past, what I realized is, and that is the reason why I always stopped using my grimoires, is that I always try to basically write an entire book on witchcraft in my black books, which is not what my plan is actually. 
I just want to write down my stuff. So it's also not pretty because that is not what I'm aiming for. It's, it's not a pretty book, but I don't want you to like grimoire shame me, you know, because I'm, I'm just writing shit down. I'm not like making it aesthetically pleasing or anything like that. I'm just writing down the important stuff and that's about it. Um, so yeah, that's that. I guess I will continue writing stuff in here. I don't know yet what exactly I want to add right now because I have quite some spells like this is my this is my journal and I have quite some spells in my journal and things that I would copy from my journal to my black book but I also have quite some some recipes for incense blends and oils and stuff so yeah we will see maybe I will add some oils or something the only thing that's a little bit annoying by now is that I have not found a good pen for this kind of paper usually I use these these fine liners and they are great but they don't really work on this handmade paper and these that I have now they work but as you can see it's kind of very thick like the lines they bleed a tiny bit so they end up being a little bit thick and I don't really like that so I still have to find the perfect pen to do this but as I said it is not my goal to make this like a pretty aesthetically pleasing book I just want it to be a collection of spells and recipes and that is what it is <laughs> it doesn't have to be pretty for it All right, I took a little bit of a filming break to run some errands, basically bring some things to the post office, get some groceries. I had dinner and watched a shit ton of Trixie Mattel videos. Not very interesting, so I didn't film it. But I have two things that I really want to do today still. The first thing is that I started a spell yesterday that I need to continue today. It's my favorite spell I've ever cast, the last time I cast it, no, the first time I cast it was in October 2023. And I just realized that my pants have a hole in them. That's so sad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I cast the spell for the first time last October and it was crazy successful, a very successful success spell. So that was nice. So I thought I would use the uh, Leo Full Moon energy to do it again, basically the exact same thing. I won't show you exactly what I'm doing because it's pretty boring. Like the main event happened yesterday. So I'm just continuing the spell basically, but I will tell you a little bit of the material that I used. Um, not like the chance that I use because that is my personal thing, but I will tell you about the material because it's also, it's a very, very basic spell. Very basic, but very effective. Um, yeah, and afterwards, I really want to do my Yule Bloat. So if you haven't watched my Yule video, first of all, you should do it. Um, but if you have watched it, then you know that it wasn't necessarily always celebrated on the winter solstice. One of the sources that we have says basically that it was celebrated on midwinter and that would have been like the first full moon after the second full moon after the winter solstice something like that but it would be this full moon now so it would actually have been two days ago um, two days ago i didn't have the time yesterday i didn't have the time but today i do so i really want to do a big bloat today not necessarily to one specific deity or entity um just like a general thing i will probably address just like my my main deities 
um, my the deities on my in my hearth cold. I would like to do something for the for the land spirits, but that kind of feels weird doing it inside, so I will not do that. But I will definitely also include my ancestors in it. Um, yeah, let's do it. As you can see, this is an extremely basic candle spell. Extremely basic. The only thing that I really added was three herbs down here, which is oak bark, dandelion flowers and rowan berries, which one of them, dandelion, I only personally just associate with luck and success because I see them as very much a solar plant. But uh, yeah, for rowan berries, or rowan in general and oak. Um, it comes from folklore, Scandinavian folklore, so that's why I use those very effectively. And on the candle, I basically only used my energy and then, wait, my focus, my liquid luck oil that I also sell on my shop. Very nice success and luck oil. And my blood. And then I basically only use a chant to charge the whole thing and that's about it. And with a candle this size I usually do it three times in a row, so three days in a row. And that's about that. Yeah, not very fancy, very basic but very effective. So if you want to try that, give it a go.
Thank you.